my brother and sister that much. The powwow over the years has developed into several things that I think are worth mentioning. Number one, we had a PBS documentary done about the powwow uh, on PBS, like I said, and it won awards all over, all over for just, it was just an award-winning documentary. Uh, the second thing that happened here is that there was a period of time due to my health, you know, that I thought that I was going to have to step back and, and stop the powwow. And about that time, we came up with a scholarship. So we have an endowed scholarship here at Penn State University, and uh, it'll be here way, you know, it'll be here for as long as there's a Penn State. And, um, and that's good for people, not only Native people, any person, any person at all. It doesn't matter. As long as they show a need, you know, and want to come to school, it'll, it'll be here for them. It'll be here for them. Um, like I said, we started off with, with about 25 dancers. That kind of surprised us. I only invited maybe five or 10. And last powwow, we had maybe 235 to 250. We don't know because not everybody registers. They just dance because it's, it's, it's a good feeling. That's what they tell me. It feels good, John. It feels like I'm back home. And these are people that come from all over the United States, Arizona, New Mexico. Can you imagine coming 14 hours north of Canada to dance for a day and a half? But that's what our, our head dancers this last year did. So Penn State has, has, has labeled this a Penn State Signature Diversity Event. And I'll tell you why as, as I show you this, these slides. I think that it's important to know that um, with, especially with the way that I, I try to teach her at Penn State, um, I try to empower one, I try to empower women as much as we can, as much as I can. I try to open doors if they're shut. I try to open them and then I try to keep them open, you know, as much as for as long as I possibly can. But I also empower anyone, anyone that has a desire. What would you like to do? How can I help you? You know, and, and I've done the same thing with this, with this, with this powwow. Um, and so let me go ahead and start this. Uh, uh, let me go ahead and start this, this PowerPoint. And if you have any questions, please, please let, uh, uh, Mr. Clifford, no, and and, uh, and then Paul will let me know, and I'll try to answer your questions as much as I can. I think the I think this presentation is going to take about about twenty to thirty minutes, and then we should still have time uh, for lecture, for talk. I'm sorry for questions. <laughs> twenty seven years, you're not going to get that out of me. I'm going to lecture. Um, I did just see a note here from Sade. I never could say her name. But she's one of the brightest young women I've ever known. She was, she was kind of like a teaching assistant for me here at Penn State. And I know she's here in the audience, and I just want to say I'm so happy to hear that you're here today. All right. Um, let's see. What do I do? I wonder what I have to do to, to share. Do I need to share screen, guys, or...? It, yes, John, you should just have to, uh, should be a share screen feature. Okay. Down at the bottom there, there um, is. The green arrow up. I think we there got it. Go. And Paul, are you seeing just one slide or you're seeing more than one? I'm seeing one slide. It says the Penn State powwow. Great. This is, I like this. This is kind of an orientation that I show people that volunteer here, here for our powwow. Now that our powwow has, last year we had between five and 6,000 visitors come and visit this powwow. So it's grown into just something that's gigantic. Uh, it takes a year for me to plan this thing. And last year's powwow cost me just about $70,000. We do have supporters for the powwow that unfortunately cannot be you. Because I know Sade, you'd like to get back to the university, but we don't have a vehicle in place, you know, to take money privately from alum. Um, and we, we just, we just it's, the red tape is just too deep for us to, 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 to try and do. But different departments throughout the university start at $5,000 for an investment. And then I raise the money internally as much as I can. But I can tell you that I have literally spent thousands and thousands and thousands of my own money on this powwow because I think it's that important to this community. And so um, the, at the beginning, people said, well, are there that many American Indians at Penn State? No. Uh, when I went to the administration in the very beginning, um, the vice provost at that time said, well, John, I just need to know before I invest any money in this, how many how many American Indians are there at Penn State? I said, well, I did a search, and I think we were there's between thirty and fifty 
American Indians here. And he goes, is that really worth the money? And I go, oh, 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 it's not for us. It's not for us. We know who we are. Do you know who I am? What can you tell me about my people? What can you tell me about anything about my people? Just, just tell me three things. And he couldn't do it. And we got funded that year. And we've been funded every year since. But what's important to me is if you look right into the middle of this picture, right here, that's the Eagle Staff for our people. And this is my son, Dakota. Dakota's like 6'2", about 220. Oh, let's see if I can go back to it. He's a big guy. And this is, and when he was about this size, that's when I first brought him into the arena. And um, he was four or five. And this is my grandson, Chaske. And Chaske uh, does mean firstborn son. And so my, my son is now passing these traditions down to his boy. And you can see the amount of dancers that come from all over the country to dance at this powwow. But that's what's important about this powwow. We are a traditional powwow. And that means we hold, we hold on to things that are most important. Like um, uh, we're very interested in passing on our language, very, in, very interested in passing on our culture so it continues. It continues long after I'm gone. And this picture is one that I just truly love, even though you can't see the pictures of our faces. It's the first dance for my grandson, who is right here. He was four years old at the time. And my grandson is being brought in by his father. That's my son, Dakota. And this is his very first dance ever in the powwow. And this is my last dance at the powwow because I'm old as, I'm old as air. I'm so old. So this is the last dance for the grandfather. That's me. And that was, and what I'm trying to show you is, is that it's a, it's a circle. It's a continual circle. And that's what we, that's what our spirituality, that's what our life is, is believed, is, 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 is what we believe. Everything is in a circle. And if you think about just this powwow, well, the dance arena is in a circle. And people watch what's going on inside the arena from outside the circle or from the circle. And the drums, the drum is a circle. And people sit around it in a circle to sing in the circle. In the circle, you never know where the beginning or the end is. You never know where the beginning or the end is. And that's what we believe wholeheartedly. I could get into more of that, but you'll have to take a class. So what is a powwow? And, and Paul kind of talked about it for a minute. It's, it's a, contem a contemporary powwow is a social event. It's like a big family reunion where everyone comes to renew acquaintance, acquaintances, eat, sing, dance, and just renew the culture for another group of people, and for our children. Now it's the hospital. I'm so sorry. Um, um, and to renew the culture. And I, I just love this picture. This was taken just two years ago from this young, this young her last name is, is um, Big Man. She's Crow. So they came all the way down from Montana to dance at this powwow. The reason that they say they do that is because they feel like it's one of the more traditional powwows in the country. We do things old school way, even if, it, if we don't care about what it costs. We don't care about, uh, everyone asks me when we, when we rent the arenas, well, how much are you going to charge at the door? Well, we don't charge anything at the door. Our spirituality is not for sale. It's free. Come in and learn a little bit about, about our culture. You know, we, do we charge for food? Yes, we buy food, so we charge for it. But I can tell you that our food prices have not raised in 18 years since we've been here. So for, you can feed a family of four for $20, $25, and you'll get traditional American Indian food. There are two main types of powwows that we talk about. One is called the traditional powwow, and that's what we do. And this is um, Micheline Big Man. And Micheline is, um, she's Crow. Uh, she began the Women Warriors Color Guard. She's a combat veteran. I believe she was a staff sergeant. And um, this, her group of women warriors, her group of women warriors have brought in the colors at two presidential inaugurations. And two years ago, they were at our powwow and brought in the colors at our powwow. 
At the beginning of our powwow, we do bring in the colors and we honor all our veterans, but it doesn't matter. It does not matter. It doesn't matter what tribe you're from. You could be from the Italian tribe or the Irish tribe or the English tribe, or, or if you don't know and you're American, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be native in order for us to honor you. And we, do, we, have, honored, we have honored veterans all the way back to WW2. We had four W2 veterans about five or six years ago come in and they all and they all came in in their uniforms and they all cried and hugged each other. It was it was amazing. But the second thing, remember I told you earlier, we try hard to empower women. Most of the time, most of the time, most of the time, the the, the head veteran dancer is a man. And about 10 years ago, we brought in a Lakota woman. I'm sorry, she's Dakota, Sisseton Wampaton, to be our first female head veteran dancer. I took a little flack for it, especially for people my age. But I thought it was time for a change. These women warriors, they carry the same kind of guns in the battle that the men do. And they always have. They always have. There's also the contest powwow. You know, these powwows are plentiful. They're all over the country. Um, Pennsylvania doesn't have many traditional or, or how do I want to say authentic American Indian powwows. They're mostly hobbyists, people who are not native, but want to, I don't know the words I'm looking for. They, they pretend to be Indians for a weekend. And what they do is they have a contest. And a lot of, but a lot of native people also have the contest powwow, you know. And what I what I don't like about this is that it's a competition, and we're not supposed to compete with each other. We're not. So, that's one of the things I was taught early, early on to be humble, and never to compete with another native person, another person. Period. But that's what this is. So the best dancer wins the first prize of ten thousand dollars. The second dancer wins the the next best prize, and so on and so on and so on. I don't care for that. It's out there. It happens. Uh, Native people do it. But I'm more interested in tradition about what do we really know about ourselves? How do we keep that going, especially in the 21st century? How about etiquette? I think is really important for, uh, and I wanted to bring this in, especially today, since I have a, a, a large group of people to talk to. Of, of those, a lot of people from the Alumni Association volunteer at our powwow. A lot of them do. Or they visit the powwow. So let's go over etiquette. How do you act in front of a powwow or at a powwow? Well, please remember, please, no face paints, no feathers or dresses or dress of this sort. It's a good day to, to dress nicely and to show respect for another culture. And we try to get, we try to get uh, uh, for example, at our very first powwow, we had some uh, young ladies uh, come to the powwow uh, dressed uh, like Indian, like Indians, very tiny skirts, very high heels, um, face paint, and I had to be the bad guy and say, you're not welcome here. You're not welcome here. And I, I didn't let them in. The hard part is when I see children, you know, who are like four, five, six years old being carried in or walked in by their parents or their grandparents, and they're, they're dressed in face paint, you know, or they're dressed in feathers and things like that. That's just not needed, but we just don't do things that way. I mean, look at me today. You don't see a whole lot of, you don't see a whole, you don't see any face paint on me at all. You don't see any feathers, you know. You don't. You see a little. I do wear this necklace, and I'll, I'll tell. I'll talk about it later. But uh, these beads mean are important to me. But you don't see me dressed like that, and you never will. And if you've had me in class before, I, I can tell you that I've been teaching for forty three years, and I have never, ever, ever come to work in buckskins, beads, and feathers. Not one time. Powwow is not a weekend dress-up game. You know, we don't put on a costume. We put on regalia, regalia that has been passed down from generation to generation to generation. For example, my wife, my wife um, received my great, my great, great grandmother, her regalia, her regalia. It's a hundred and, it's probably 150 years old. It's not a costume. It's regalia, and she dances with it the way that she's supposed to. 
How is a way of life? It's about living alcohol and drug free. It's about embracing our elders, our youth, the veterans and the less fortunate. It's about honoring the drum, honoring the dance. We try to honor ourselves. We try to have pride in ourselves, our tribe and our whole native communities as a whole. It means a lot to us. I mean, for me, just this last powwow, I was sitting with two of my friends who, are, who also helped me with the powwow, Guy Jones from Standing Rock, um, in, in Standing, uh, from Standing Rock in North Dakota, and um, Roger Campbell, who lives in Kentucky and, and drives up, uh, but he's originally from Sisseton Wampton, South Dakota. And, uh, and, they, and the head drum, the, the host drum, good drum. Oh my God, one of the best in the country. Um, that drum was playing a song that I remember as a boy. And Roger looked at me, he goes, John, I go, I know. I said, this is really, really, really old because it was old when I learned it or heard it, but we, we haven't heard them in so long, you know, because so many drums quit doing it. They, 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 they play the modern stuff. And so the one thing I told the boys, my, my friends at the time was, you know, what's good about this, Roger? He says, this gets, this gets to warm our hearts one more time. And as old as we are, it gets to hold our, warm our hearts one more time. But look at my granddaughter over there dancing to it. She's hearing it for the first time and she won't forget it. Um, oh, that's a mistake slide. See, I need Sade here to help me out with that one. Um, remember, people, please do not touch any item of clothing or jewelry or any kind of the accessories that the dancers may be wearing. These items are considered fragile. Well, they're very fragile or they're sacred. Some of them are very old and been handed down from generation to generation to generation by ancestors. So long. And it we we hate it when something breaks because we know that something important has happened and we've lost a, a little bit of our of our heritage of our you know like my father made that or my grand my great grandfather made that or my uncle gave me that and then he was killed in vietnam the next week you know it means a lot like that when you're in the power when you're at the powwow, it's respectful to stand and remove your your hat when the eagle staff is brought in that's like our flag or taken from the arena it's also respectful to do it to stand during the opening ceremonies and the closing songs, which sometimes can be a little bit long. Be sure you ask, you listen to the MC for instructions. Be sure you listen to the MC for instructions. Visitors are welcome to enter and dance here, uh, enter the dance arena during intertribal dances or by invitation during special songs. So, um, if Paul's at the powwow and he's like, "Oh, this is boring. I'm bored." And then the inner travel comes, I'm going to go get him and say, hey, Paul, your turn to dance. Oh, I'm not going to dance, John. Come on, man, get in. Remember, we are Penn State. Hop in. And he will. He will. Or I'll get my wife to do it. No one turns down my wife. No one. No one. Women, women hold the power with our people. Women hold the power with our people. Many times I said the reason we're still here is because the women hold the power. At other times, please respect the sacredness of the arena by, by not entering it. So uh, if let's say that I, uh, that I wave at Paul from across the arena. So, it, I mean, it's common. The, the quickest way is just cut that arena in half and walk across it. No, 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 no. We don't do that. He'll have to walk around and meet me or I'll meet him halfway. Appropriate dress for women is casual, but not shorts or short skirts. Men should wear shirts with sleeves and pants if possible. Shorts are not really appropriate. And whatever you do, never, never, never dress like you what you see in this picture. Never, never, never dress like that. I'll try to keep you from coming in. And it's really, really hard to tell somebody, I'm, I'm afraid you and your, your grandson are going to have to leave. You know, you can't come in dressed like this. Or please go take that stuff off. You know, if you see an eagle feather that's on the ground, please do not pick it up. I mean, the first the people are so friendly here in Pennsylvania. The first thing you're going to want to do is pick it up, but don't. Instead, stand over it. Stand over it so nobody else can touch it, and and send your send somebody. Just grab somebody. If I'm walking by, you grab my arm. Excuse me, even though you don't know me. Excuse me. Excuse me. There's an eagle feather here, and I'll go. Oh my God. 
I'm native. Let me stand over this. And then I do. And then please go get the MC. And then we take care of it. There's a special ceremony. There's a special ceremony. There's a special meaning to it that I can't get into you about it. But um, it's important that you do not pick it up. Please, and I'll take photographs or videotape of individuals outside the arena without first getting their permission. So my one of my boys dresses up in full regalia a lot of the time, Braveheart. He's in full regalia. And so some of the things that he's wearing are only for, only for ceremony. And they can't be taken, you can't take a picture of it. We, be, we believe that you cannot do that. However, if if so, don't just take a picture of it and, and then say, Can I can I have your name? No. Say, excuse me, sir, could I please take your picture? And he'll say yes or no. Please do not tape the songs unless the head singer or the drum gets permission. Why? Because sometimes they're very, very old, like that song that Roger and I heard, Roger Guy and I heard at this last powwow, and you're never supposed to record it. It's a sacred song. You're never supposed to record it. You're supposed to keep it up here. And then when the time, like when the time came, I told my I told my child, my son, I said, look, son, I want you to remember this song. And look at your daughter out there dancing to it. And as I see that pop, and he he will listen to it. He'll remember it. And it might not be today. It might be 10 years from now. He hears it again, and I'll be gone. And he'll say, oh, my God, I remember when Dad told me about this. That's how we keep our culture going. Feel free to talk to the dancers and the powwow staff outside the arena. They usually are very happy to answer your questions about their clothing, dances, and culture. Most of the time. I mean, look at this woman. Does she look friendly? No, but she is. She really is. <laughs> she doesn't look it. But you just have to be brave and say, excuse me, can you tell me a little bit about this huge eagle feather wing you're carrying? You know, and many times they'll say, well, what would you like to know? Or they'll say, I'm sorry, I can't. Or they sometimes they'll just turn. They don't mean it out of disrespect, but they don't know another way to say no. When you talk to native people, please do not use words such as chief, engine, redskin, squaw, papoose, or wampum. Most native people find um, these and some other words very, very offensive. Everyone does. Every native person does. Every native person does. You can't say it. Okay, you have freedom of speech in America? Well, yes, you do. However, I'm telling you, we are older than America. We were here when Europeans came and made this America. We're older than that. And our culture says these words, these words are bad. Please don't use them. There's no reason to. At this powwow, we have been so lucky to pass on these traditions for the last 18 years, especially to people that are kind of like misplaced. They're from, they live in central Pennsylvania now, but they might be from, they might be from uh, Standing Rock in North Dakota. You know, they might be from Pine Ridge in, in South Dakota. They might be from Minnesota, Michigan. Who knows where they're from? But we're able to pass these traditions on a little bit. And so this, this boy right here is, oh, I don't know, probably 10, 11 years old. And this is my son, Braveheart. Yes, he wore those braids over to high school. Yes, he did get the business because he was the only Native kid at the, well, him and my son, Dakota, were the only two Native kids there at the time. And he had people push gum into his hair and then push it tight. He had people throw mashed potatoes in his hair. He had people spit on him. But he, I, I praise him for, for putting up with it all, for putting it up with it all. And he believes in his culture very deeply. And this is my wife, Victoria, telling him that the steps he just made on this dance were wrong. And here's how you fix that, in a nice way, in a nice way. And this is my son today. Well, this is a few years back, dancing with my, with my uh, four-year-old grandson at the time. So he's, oh my God, that's six years ago now. So um, this is six years ago, and he's he, he, he was a cross country runner for for a state college who graduated from uh, state college high with honors and also graduated from Penn State with double degrees and honors through the Shriers Honors College as well. This beautiful person, she doesn't like me to say that, is my wife Victoria, who I've been lucky to 
I've been married to for almost 40 years. I love her like I met her yesterday, guys. We pass these traditions on. This is my, th at the time, my, my three-year-old granddaughter, Cheyenne. And, you know, we're all, she's walking with me. And this is at our old, we used to have the powwow over at State College um, Middle School. Um, oh, I can't think of the name of it right now. And uh, Mount Nittany Middle School. And so she's walking with me because I walk around with a clipboard. And I'm, I'm trying to get everything organized. And so she goes, Grandpa, can I help? I go, sure. So I gave her the clipboard. <laughs> And you know what she told me as she took that clipboard? She goes, someday I'm going to take over this powwow. And you know what? I believe her. I really do. Here she is at about five years old, making fry bread for Sally and Tom Horn as they come over to eat. Because if they come to the powwow committee meeting, I feed them. And I feed them old school food, old school. Fry bread, chili, fry bread tacos, fry bread and buffalo, whatever it is. But what I what I why I like to show this picture so much is look at the smile on her face in both pictures. She's native. She knows. She knows she's Apache. She knows she's in day. And just helping for a gathering of her people, she feels connected to something very, very deeply. You know what I mean? She feels connected. She feels connected very deeply. At our powwow, we have ven vendors come from all over the country, North Carolina, New Mexico, New York, Canada, Michigan, South Dakota, Albuquerque. We have a, a guy come, well, now that he lives, he lives in D.C. area, but he, uh, until uh, maybe two years ago, he lived in Albuquerque, and he brings about a half a million dollars worth of turquoise and silver to the powwow. Uh, we, uh, we have a, a, a man from Cherokee, North Carolina, that brings in over a million dollars worth of, he's an artist. Of, of turquoise and silver. Um, are prices high for some things? Yes, some things, you know, some things are kind of expensive, but some things are their children can buy. You know what I mean? Children can buy and it's not fake. It's real, real native stuff. We have about 25 vendors, 20 to 25 vendors. Uh, our head veteran dancer is, Clay well, last year was Clayton Logan. He's from the Cataractus Nation. He's a Vietnam vet, um, flew jets in the North Vietnam. Uh, he's 89 years old, and he's 90 now. He just turned 90. He still comes to the powwow, still speaks the language, and uh, still is one of the most honored veterans that we've ever had. This is Rich Hill. I can't believe this guy. He's got to be close to my age, but I don't think he is. He's a former Thunderbird dancer. He's a champion dancer. He dances all over the country. Uh, his steps are just amazing. His son came to the powwow when he was just a boy and came here to study at Penn State. This is a boy asking his dad if he did the dance just right. A lot of that goes on. This is how they learn how to dance correctly and what it means. Every dance has a meaning. This young lady, I, I like to show her picture because she's just a kid here, five years old, and dancing in what we call tiny tots and um, uh, in the pink. And the reason I like to show this picture is because she's been dancing with us ever since she was five years old. And now, just this last year, 20, well, 2023, she committed to Penn State, so she'll be here in the fall. And one of the reasons that she gives is because she feels like she belongs here because she's been dancing at this powwow since she was five. I know her dad, her mom and dad too. Again, just a picture of how important this is to the children. It means a lot. Dance trackers, okay, these are some of the positions that we have. We have, we, and this is where I need Sally so bad. Dance trackers help keep track of powwow dancers. That allows us to offer a little day money at the end of the second day. And so what happens is, is these kids, anybody, and I'll, I'll close it down here in a minute, Paul. I, I don't want to do, I want to make sure we have time. Um, uh, it, Penn State University, every penny in, every penny out. And we've never been a penny short in, in 18 years or a penny over in 18 years because I'm a stickler. I teach ethics here, and I make sure we follow the rules completely. So if this little girl dances for both days, 
every time that they call her area of dancer and it looks like she's a, a Shaw dancer, you know, the, the MC would call for Shaw dancers, Shaw dancers, Shaw dancers, and all the Shaw dancers come out to dance. Then the dance trackers write down the write down 103. They put a little check mark by her number. And on Sunday, uh, if she stays till Sunday, I can give her maybe two or three dollars or five dollars for dancing. We use that money because people come here with nothing. You know, Native people are on the bottom rung of the social economic ladder, the bottom rung. And a lot of times these people come and dance and they have nothing and they won't ask for anything. That's where I come in. So let's just say Paul is one of those dancers. He come, he's coming all the way from Florida. We get a lot of dancers from Florida. I'll walk into him. Hey, Paul, it's good to see you, brother. Good to see you too, brother. How you been? Pretty good. I'm still here. Hey, man, you doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing okay. Paul, um, I'll be all right. Okay, well, look, we're going to have, uh, you know, you're dancing both days, you know? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll give you a little bit of money to get back on, back, you know, buy some gas and get back home on. Okay, thank you. Matt could really use it. He never asked and I offered. And if, if he did, even if he doesn't dance both days, I'll give you money out of my own pocket. We need people to help set up and tear down things. Uh, that takes more time than you think, especially for the, the size of, of the arena that we have today. We're at the 3C Sports Arena now. We are g -mungus. And that's where Tom Horn comes in. Oh, my God, he sets up that arena. I can't believe we had so many people. They should have patted him on the back. They patted me, they're patting me on the back. And I go, no, Tom did this. Tom did the whole thing, you know. And, and it, it was just amazing. It was just one of the best powwows we ever had, ever. We have a lot more space now that we're in the, in the, in the uh, 3C sports arena. We need vendors that, that I mean, this is Rick Hill. Um, and Rick has a, a huge vendor store. And see all these beads? He'll sell a bunch of them. But he also carries things, moccasins, blankets, all kinds of things. He needs help. He's an old man. He's 86 years old. And he, he needs help putting up the tables and tearing things down. And I want him here every year. And he does, he wants to come too because he'll he'll make money. Again, the Penn State powwow attracts dancers from all over the United States and Canada. All over. We're very excited about that. Our children learn traditions and they learn how to respect not only us, but not only each other, but people outside the culture. What's, what, what's important is that they learn the traditions. This is, this is Wolfgrass Irwin. Uh, I, when this boy was born, two days after he was born, I held him in my arms. You know, today he's, he's been dancing at our powwow since he was just a young boy. And this is a picture of him a couple of years ago dancing in the red. And now he's, in, he's he was our head man. He went from being a dancer to being the top dancer, the head man dancer, to lead the rest of the people in because he knows the tradition so well. He got a hold of me just today, just today, because he wants to get married old school Lakota style. And I do happen to know someone that can help me, but I know that I know the ceremony. At this powwow, we had one other, one other group, uh, Michelle Bixby and her husband get married at this powwow. And um, that's the only powwow wedding we've ever had. We did it old school tradition, old way, old way. and. Um, you can't take pictures of it or anything like that. That's part of it. But how would you like to have 4,000 people come to your wedding? And this is what I say to my, the people that volunteer. Remember to the general public, you are the American Indian powwow. This is what Penn State wrote a while back. The powwow is, in our honest opinion, the most significant and well-attended cultural event in the State College area. And we've been called the... Uh, Penn State is also called this the signature diversity event at Penn State. So what will you see when you come? You're going to see this is a couple of minutes long. It's just two, I think. It might be a little bit loud, so I hope not. But <laughs>
I think you get a little bit of the idea, and I should have, I tried to stop it. I wanted to introduce it just a little bit. It's called, it's a war dance. It's called the duck and dive. And what's happened is, is that the enemy, probably the United States Army, is on a hill. And the natives are charging up the hill. But as they charge up the hill, they bring out these big guns, their cannons. And so every time you hear the drum, well, on the offbeat, you hear the drum pound. It's a cannonball coming towards you. And so it's called a duck and dive because you're supposed to duck and dive away from it so you don't get hurt. And then you continue up the hill. Okay, everyone, thank you for sharing your time. This is important. We tell everybody this for all the help that we get, you know, for helping to make this event something that the children will remember forever. We, we ask for about 160, 170 um, volunteers, and we get them every year. We get them every year, you know. Uh, we feed you a little bit. We give you a powwow shirt, which Tom Horn collected from the very, I think from the second one, because the first one, we didn't have one. <laughs> and uh, he, he presented it to me last year, which made me, okay, Tom, it made me cry, but I, I, I just meant that much to me. It meant that much to me. All right. Let me see if I can stop share here. Oh, do I do that, Paul? Or what do I do? Um, I'm going to stop.